Man and the Sea is an English fiction, but in Commander Abelard's Tommy's experience, Young Man and the Sea is an Indian glory and reality. In this prestigious interview series, this time Commander Abhilash Tommy is our guest. Huge congratulations on your incredible achievement. In Thank you. 2018, you could not complete the circumnavigation, but surviving all odds in this year, uh, you have made it and creating history. Uh, how do you feel about the success of yours? Uh, the success is much sweeter because of the fact that uh, in 2018 I couldn't complete it. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm very uh, proud uh, that I've uh, that I've been able to finish it, and very relieved as well. I remembered those words when I was uh, doing the last circumnavigation, doing this uh, Golden Globe race, and I tweeted from sea that man uh, cannot be defeated. He can be destroyed, but uh, he cannot be defeated. What was the biggest challenge uh, in this entire expedition this time? Well, it's it's you know a series of challenges, not just one point uh, where things go wrong. I had a bit of a tough time finding a sponsor, but thankfully I found uh, some incredible people who supported me. Uh, I was running short on time to make it to the start line, but again, thanks to the help of a lot of people, I made made it to the start line despite uh, the fact that I suffered uh, my boat suffered an accident, and um, the, the entire bow had to be replaced and some work on the mast needed to be done. And uh, during the uh, race itself, uh, there were a lot of uh, small problems with the boat, including uh, my self steering getting damaged at Cape Horn, um, then uh, mainsail ripping or running out of water or you know things like that. Uh, so yeah, there were a series of problems, and finally I finished after 236 days. In 2012, you completed another major uh, expedition. Eleven years later, you completed this Golden Globe race. This period. Uh, what, what are the things you involved in? Um, so I took part in Golden Globe Race 2018. That's one major thing that I did. Um, I was planning to fly around the world, uh, but um, due to certain issues, that did not work out. Um, other than that, I've been involved with uh, sailing uh, uh, in the sense that I've been a member of the Yachting Association of India, and I've been, uh, you know, they've been taking my views on how to uh, make th things better for sailing. Uh, I'm also the president of the J80 Class Association. Uh, so we conduct uh, offshore races uh, from Chennai, uh, you know, through this association. Um, plus, I'm a member of a few clubs, and I kind of uh, help them out uh, whenever needed. What was your uh, daily routine in yacht uh, Bayanath as a sailor sailing single-handed? Uh, so my daily routine was divided into uh, the things that I had to do on time, and you know, any emergency that uh, uh, happened. So the things that I had to do was, uh, let's say, have breakfast at a certain time. Uh, the next major meal used to be a dinner, which I had to cook, and in between I had to, uh, you know, um, uh, do my celestial navigation, for which I needed the sun to be at a certain position. Uh, so these are the things that you have to do daily. But other than that, if there was some problem with the boat, you attend to it. Uh, if the wind picks up, you take a reef or you adjust your uh, sails. And this is something that you do continuously. There is no stop for it. And uh, whenever you get time, you go to sleep. Uh, so, uh, how you manage uh, to arrange uh, these type of foods? Um, my, uh, as per my manager's calculations, I needed about uh, something like six to eight lakh calories to finish this uh, race. And uh, um, what uh, we did is uh, we tried to source food from three different uh, places. One was uh, tinned meat, uh, which I used to have with cooked rice. And I had uh, food from DFRL, Defense Food Research Laboratories. Uh, that food, uh, you know, you can just open the packet and eat it, or just heat it a little bit and then eat. And I had freeze-dried food, uh, which is uh, you add uh, hot water to it, and then uh, you know it becomes uh, edible and you can eat that. Other than this, I had uh, muesli and milk for breakfast, a uh, lot of um, uh, cashew and peanuts for snacks, and yeah, that's that's what I mostly carried. A lot of popcorn also. In the rough sea. Uh, facing many problems, so most time you will be up. How many hours you'll sleep? Uh, well, on a good day you get to sleep about uh, five hours, uh, and that was not at a stretch. You you know you sleep and then get up and do something, and then you sleep for 15 minutes, get up and check if things are fine, and you keep doing this for uh, yeah eight months. I read in an article you stored uh, rainwater for survival. So rainwater is uh, I mean. Uh, you don't have a choice. Uh, that's the only way you can get some fresh water in the boat. Um, and uh, when I set off, I collected about 30 to 40 liters of rainwater before the equator. But in the southern ocean, it became quite difficult to collect rainwater. On the return leg, I managed about 150 liters of rainwater from 
uh, you know close to the equator a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor how much do you agree with this in my experience uh, uh, it's it's uh, the toughest uh, part of sailing is sailing when there is no wind uh, it's it's very stressful and it's very tiring to keep the boat moving when there is no wind uh, in a storm it's much easier to keep the boat moving we have often time heard about the news of various sea creatures and very dangerous pirates did you encounter any such moments luckily no but uh, i went through two areas which uh, were of concern uh, so the thing is close to portugal uh, orcas have started attacking um, orca which is a kind of whale they've started attacking sailboats and uh, these orcas are teaching their little ones to you know attack in the same way and uh, this has led to the sinking of a few boats already and close to west africa uh, i was warned that there is a threat of piracy it was not a very safe place um luckily i did not have to encounter any of these problems you are a navy man uh, do you think your military uh, experience and training was advantageous in some way in undertaking such difficult uh, solo yacht expeditions first uh, uh, it was of course you know i had an edge because of my naval training and uh, one bit was because of the knowledge that i gained from the navy uh for example navigation or meteorology or oceanography and things like that uh, which are taught as subjects in the navy and especially uh, you know as a pilot you are taught a lot about meteorology so that really helped uh, but other than that our training at naval academy helped me a lot in dealing with uh, the problems that i encountered and finding solutions and not giving up every time you return from the sea uh, do you feel like it's calling you back uh, i do i do and uh, i i feel like going back to the sea quickly again okay so which one is the most favorite uh, place the land or the sea sea see why the philosophical no, the thing is uh, a when there are people uh, you know there's too much noise uh, they are asking for your, for your attention and um, uh, when you are very surrounded by people you are always living an external life but when you are alone um, for a long time your journey becomes an internal journey and the more you stay away from the world you can understand the world uh, much better then how do you feel to adjust to uh, live on land uh, do you feel blue it is tough <laughs> it's tough but uh, having survived the sea i'm sure i can survive this also okay uh, when coming to the personal things are you a believer in god absolutely then so which is the most toughest and uh challenging situation you ever faced in the sea i think in this race uh, I, i mean the toughest situation i think would have been the accident of 2018 when i fractured my spine and then uh, there was a storm and uh, i was waiting to be rescued it took uh, four days for somebody to even you know get close to me so probably that would be the toughest situation i have faced till now okay, ever you miss the family your kids while sailing this time yes i miss my family quite a lot and uh, in fact one of the problems was uh, you know i couldn't communicate with my wife i didn't know what was happening at home and uh, i knew that my wife was planning to put my kid in school when i was away uh, but i had no idea whether she was actually able to do that or not so all these things were annoying into me and um, it was a bit of concern so each time uh, you will meet an indian in c uh, so what about this time uh, this time i did meet a guy called alfaz Alfaz is from Ernakulam. From Kerala. From Kerala, of course. Okay. I met Alfaz uh, from Ernakulam, close to Uruguay. Uh, I met a ship called uh, Omodos, uh, and uh, their skipper was. Uh, we have common friends in India, uh, so their skipper uh, was Indian. Uh, the captain was Indian, and this was um, before. This was north of uh, Canary Islands. Just before I rounded Cape Horn, I met a ship with an Indian crew. Uh, so yeah i did meet uh, quite a lot of people let's see uh, in in your entire journey which was the most difficult area you sailed uh, i would say that was the rounding of cape horn cape horn yes and just near chile near chile yes and just before um, cape horn i had like uh, i went through two pretty bad storms the first one was on 26 january and the second one was on uh, 7th of february and uh, the 7th february storm uh, you know toppled my boat two times i had two knockdowns and uh, it caused a lot of damage to the boat and i kept repairing these things but finally my wind pilot uh, paddle of the wind pilot broke and i had to find a solution very quickly because i was very close to chile the wind was pushing me onto chile uh, onto land and uh, i had about between 30 to 40 knots of wind which is quite a lot um and lot of waves 
uh, and the night was falling and there were no lighthouses uh, around so uh, it was um, quite interesting in every voyage there are so many uncertainties ahead and we don't have any clarity regarding what are the things coming in front of us uh, so uh, uh, what about the wind storms uh, once you said that you always like wind storm because just like a competitor in the sea uh, how was your experience this time regarding the wind storms and knockdowns well i really enjoyed the storms uh, in fact there was a point when i was complaining that uh, there are no storms no wind, no no yeah, storms and i say that uh, it's only when you go through a storm that you can say paisa vasool you know paisa vasool why yeah otherwise i mean what's the <laughs> point in uh, going till cape horn if you don't find a storm Mm. Uh, you might as well just sail uh, you know in the bay of bengal mm. or arabian sea so uh, your, your target was 210 days but you completed in 236 uh, so i uh, kept a target of 210 based on uh, the last uh, race a uh, 2018 race and um, um, another fact was uh, this race was uh, happening slightly later so i was expecting uh, you know 2018 race started in july this one was starting in september and i expected slightly favorable winds in the southern ocean but uh, the thing is uh, the race organizers had put too many waypoints too many gates uh, and uh, the uh, uh, what do you call it the uh, southern exclusion limit uh, was also you know too far north uh, so we had too many high pressures and uh, we kept waiting to get into gates uh, because we ran out of winds almost every competitor ran out of winds and due to all these reasons the uh, race took much longer do you think the country like india extending uh, supports for uh, expeditions of such kind well at least uh, in my experience the navy has really supported me the navy has um, uh, 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 if i were not a naval officer i don't think i could have done any kind of sailing uh, but beyond that i'm quite surprised that uh, you know even now corporates uh, are very shy to uh, extend support so do you think the indian government uh, should relax some laws uh, to encourage adventure tourism especially the uh, sea uh, sports absolutely so uh, in india uh, one problem i have seen it, uh, seen is that either there is no regulation or there is a lot of regulation uh, we are not quite able to find that golden mean where uh, you know uh, things are safe at the same time we are promoting sailing uh, so yeah we need to we need to really work on this so this is your break time uh, how have you planned uh, your future voyages as a seaman uh, well right now i'm just you know focusing on the break to regain my health uh, spend time with my family and uh, meet all the people who supported me and uh, express my gratitude um but th- that doesn't mean that i'm not thinking of the future i am in my head already planning some races and voyages and uh, stuff like that more adventures and i'll tell about them uh, you know uh, as we come closer to it Uh, so such sports it's very difficult to get a sponsor uh, fortunately you got a good sponsor by anath uh, what's your experience uh, in knocking doors to get a sponsor in each time uh, well this time i was lucky to have a sponsor from uh, uh, you know a, a fantastic sponsor like bayanath and i had the support of uh, jellyfish water sports it's an indian company right yes it's a it's in, a indian water team. sports yeah. company and they've been supporting me in 2018 and this race as well they were my conservation partners this time um but other than that uh, my experience was indian sponsors has been quite uh, bad and uh, i really don't understand why nobody would support sailing um in 2013 uh, you know uh, when i did my first uh, non stop circumnavigation it was considered so important an achievement that uh, the president of india himself came down to receive me and that's something that's never happened in our history the president has never received anybody outside of rashtrapati bhavan um 2018 uh, i had the numbers uh, as in i had the uh, uh, the figures of uh, earned media valuation for the race and uh, that was quite encouraging and i thought that uh, you know people would support me in 2022 at least on the basis of that um, but um, um i believe people in india think that uh, sailing as a sport doesn't get eyeballs so it's not worth investing uh, money um at the same time i'm very lucky that i got bayanath as sponsors and when somebody mentioned this to bayanath that uh, you know abhilash is looking for um, uh, money for the next race and this is his background 
uh, I think they made their decision within probably five minutes. They said yes. Uh, we had a meeting, and even before I signed a contract with them, Bainat was uh, already dispersing uh, the money and starting to uh, work on their side of the story. So yeah, I'm quite uh, lucky that uh, you know finally because of a UAE company. Uh, the Indian flag could uh, go around the world and find a position uh, on the podium. Uh, what's the cost of such uh, expeditions? So, GGR is supposed to be one of the uh, most inexpensive around the world races. And if you want to do a race from India, uh, I think uh, somebody should budget uh, anywhere between 4 to 5 crores. Uh, if you do the race from uh, based out of Europe, it could be 3 crores. Uh, if you want to put in your effort over a period of 2 or 3 years, your labor, to prepare a boat, you can even do it in two crores and probably sell the boat in one crore when you come back and you know you spent only one crore. Uh, the next round the world race is called the OGR, Ocean Globe Race, which is a team round the world race. That uh, could cost anywhere up to 10 to 15 CR. Um, then there is a one day globe, which is a single handed round the world non stop that could be 50 to 60 CR. And then you've got um, 60 what CR. Yeah what, used, yeah, what used to be called the Volvo Ocean Race is now called the Ocean Race and that could go up to probably 100 plus. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what's your advice to the uh, Indian youth into this adventurous sports? you have any plan to start an academy or mentor uh, the young people? Well, I personally don't want to start an academy <laughs> because uh, that will mean I'll have to work with panchayats and state <laughs> governments and, you know, uh, work with all the regulations and uh, um, uh, I've I've like uh, done a lot of uh, file pushing Red in. Tapism. Yeah, I've done a lot of file pushing in South Block and North Block, and uh, I mean that's a project in itself. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, retire was uh, I wanted private sponsorship for GDR. Uh, there's a certain level to which a government can help an athlete or a sport, and I wanted to prove that uh, uh, you know if a private sponsor steps in. Uh, and uh, they sponsor GGR, they will get immense value out of it, which is what has happened right now. Uh, so my sponsors are quite happy with uh, you know the results and I think they believe uh, that the money is quite well spent. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope that uh, Yachting in India um, uh, finds the same support uh, as cricket does or uh, any other sport. All right, it's a very inspiring moment. I uh, appreciate your time, Commander Abhidash Tommy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. प्रस्तुति नीव नोड़ी ऐशिया नेवर्ण न्यूज